Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sunday school. Let's start a little earlier. Why, you got some weed? Why, you got some weed out here? Well, because we had such a good week, we want to share it. How was your week? We had a wonderful day yesterday. Uh, a sad occasion. We attended a funeral for Christopher Bates, who was killed on a motorcycle last week. However, we learned about a man who was a true man of God and a wonderful family man. Uh, I only wish I could have had a chance to have met him uh, when he was still alive. However, we look forward to seeing him in heaven and uh, getting a chance to meet him up there. That's right. But, uh, we ended up with uh, 20 motorcycles who came. We had people from Ticonderoga, Thank you. Watertown. <coughs> One bike had a Colorado plate on it. And uh, we escorted, and Vermont, we escorted from Donaldson's funeral home over to Route 11, went up to Moira to CFC, had a long church service up there, and went over and crossed 11B and went up to Stevens Cemetery, which is out of the country, uh, by North, uh, North Bangor. And uh, uh, had the funeral service there, made some new friends, and just a wonderful day of fellowship, beautiful day of the ride. It was just an all together wonderful, wonderful day. So. Someone else? What's the Lord done for you this week? <coughs> well, I have a report on my ultrasound. Uh, according to what they said on the, the my, you know, lap there. Right there? Yeah, yeah uh, that didn't sound too good. Um, so, now the blood work was done like, you know, nothing has made a change. So then I was about to see the doctor tomorrow. No, uh, they called, they said, due to unforeseen for, uh, circumstances, he won't be able to see you. That's the cancer. And he said, he won't be able to see you until January. Wow. I says, I won't be here in January. I'll be in Florida. So now I have an appointment on uh, May the 13th. So what I'm doing is uh, my ultrasound, I'm having that faxed to my primary care down in Florida. Yeah. And my blood work, um, they're supposed to fax to my primary care down there. And I see my primary care in November. Wow. So. Well, working out, but still it could have been better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I've done a lot of little prayers for you this morning. Okay. On my way here today, I was didn't have any breakfast, so I stopped at Dunkin' Donuts and got a little breakfast, a small breakfast sandwich, and a large cup of caramel swirl coffee. Mm -hmm. Not coffee. So I sat in my cup holder and I got here and I backed in and I took my cup of coffee out and I set it up on the roof, <coughs> along with my books. <laughs> now I've done this a thousand times. This is nothing new. Now there's a cup holder right in the door. I have to put stuff outside the car because once I get out I can't reach stuff because of my hip. So I set it up there and I got out of the car and for some odd reason when I hoisted myself up I must have whacked that cup with an elbow. <laughs> and it flopped over toward me. And all the coffee ran out of the cup top of my t-shirt, down my back, down my shorts, out the pant leg, into the car. <laughs> $3 cup of coffee, and now I'm wearing it like cologne. <laughs> so it lands on the ground. I look at it, and something dribbled right into the cup holder in the door. I could have sat in it. Okay. <laughs> now, my normal response, normal? Your old response. My old response to that, I had to turn the windows blue outside. You could have heard me. And I looked at it and went, well, that was a poor decision. <laughs> so I picked the cup up and put it in the cup holder it should have been in the first place. And I shut the door and I said, you know, I'm soaked with coffee, I'm not comfortable, but I'm going to go in and worship the Lord today. Because it's not about whether I'm comfortable or not. And that might not seem like a big thing, but if you didn't know me years ago, you'd know me because I did really yeah. Yeah. So, so that's your new aroma. Car yeah, now I, now I smell like, uh, was that guy that used to be with a mule? Juan Valdez here? Oh, wow, you know, Scripture has something to say about that. I didn't doubt it. It talks about, about uh, 
we are the are an aroma to God. We're to the lost, we're the aroma of death. But to the saved, it was the aroma of life. So I'm sure God was pleased with your new response compared to your old response. Well, I was frustrated for a moment, but I didn't go into the histronics and carry on and right. all that. So, well, oh well, it's what caught me. You know. Actually, it's the gospel that's the aroma, not us. But we're supposed to share the gospel. Yeah. So, really, that is a witness. We're like the atomizer, we spray the aroma. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Really? Yeah. Right. Sure. Yeah. Too bad there wasn't somebody there to witness that. But at least we heard about it. God, God witnessed it. That was good. Yeah. Well, you know, that like, one camera, we might be able to replay that on Bowser as well. Is it out there? <laughs> yeah. What? Did it happen out here? Right here in front of that. Oh, I thought it happened at the store. Just as I got out to come in here. Oh, just now. Yeah, the coffee is still there. Sylvia's car may block it a little bit, but we can get that in funny little videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, look out, here comes trouble. <laughs> very fortunate that it wasn't hot. Yeah. Oh, it was hot. It was, I just bought it. It was very hot. Because Ooh. I had blowing hot water on yeah. my wrist this, uh, oh. this week. And me and Zachary. Oh, me and Zachary. Ooh, it was just hot. Yeah. 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 Put aloe vera on it and it really seems a lot. Anyway, doesn't make it fun. It could have been worse. Could have been worse. But I didn't have my cup of coffee that morning. <laughs> Anything else? We're just taking praises. Uh, praise. My daughter's doing well in Korea and she'll be home this Saturday. Oh, oh really? Wow, that's for a visit then. <laughs> no, she's home until she gets her certification. She will probably head back to Korea sometime in the next 12 months for a year's contract to be there oh, to teach English. I thought she was already starting that. Wow. But she's got to come back here first and get her teaching certificate. Oh, she's okay. got her bachelor's degree, but she has to have that teaching certificate before she can be enrolled in that year contract. I see. As far as I understand, I'm old, I don't catch on fast. Well, I praise the Lord for uh, the jail ministry yesterday. Uh, the D block is still my high attenders now. And uh, one of the guys, Elijah, uh, hadn't been there for a while, but he came back and, and uh, I had some new people and they, they're they all pretty well enjoying it and wanting to be a part of it. And uh, Elijah gave me a hug when he left. Where's this coming from? <laughs> So, and I think you might have been crying in, when we were talking about the Lord and I was praying for him. So, so that was the day of Elijah, Saturday. The day of Elijah? The day of Elijah. Yeah. So I'm thankful for the ministry. And, and I got approval for the guy with the guitar. There you for, go. for the idea of it. He still has to pass his background, but I'm sure he will. Pastor at the Baptist Church in Canton. Well, that might be questionable. What's that? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so that would be good. Yeah. And that was my goal when I first started. But I was hoping to have music as part of the service. Yeah. He would be fun. So. Yeah. Do you know him, Pastor yeah. Brad? Yeah. You know Brad. Oh, he's, yeah. He's, he's got an amazing sense of humor. He's yeah. my oh, daughter. you know him too. No, oh, my daughter goes there. She, that's where she sings in the choir. Oh, and okay. uh, Brad, uh, if you ever get a chance, Brad can play the guitar. Oh, but if he ever is off the chance, listen and get his wife to sing. That is the one of the most beautiful voices I've ever heard in my life. Really? Oh, that woman just absolutely like silk. Beautiful. Well, the Lord worked that out. Yeah. That, I didn't ask him, he asked me. Yeah. And That's awesome. Yeah. Brad, he, he, uh, there's a story that goes with Brad, but I want him to tell him. Yeah. But uh, he uh, he hosts a NA meeting every Tuesday. Yeah. Over there. Oh, that's right. And I, I go, they did tell me that. Yeah. It's uh, celebration celebration recovery. Yep. Yep. 
And uh, mom, we have some old old friends that go there. So mom's even gone there. Rosenberg's done. And, uh, oh, okay. She's done, yeah. she just started the 12th step oh, yeah. with those ladies. It's not just for addicts, but it's hang-ups, hurts, and habits. Good. He might end up teaching that over there. Oh, wonderful. Because so. Franny does it with the women. She started uh, just with a regular chapel, and then she uh, started doing recovery. It's growing. It's That's great. awesome. And you, you know the Lord's in it when things grow. Yes. That's, and yeah. they come together without a lot of uh, trouble. Yeah. In fact, you might have some opposition. That happens because the devil don't like it. But you can tell when God's in something, things just flow. Mm -hmm. um, so I thank the Lord for that. Then he must be in here. <laughs> well, uh, too. I, I thought I was doing mirth for your funny, but I'll raise you to it. <laughs> we're going to start a, a Sumerai warrior group. There you, there you go, guys. All those guys that do the wrestling in, the, in their diapers. Yeah. Yeah. In the belly bumpers. <laughs> oh, my word. I don't want to picture that. All right. Anybody else got to pray before we do prayer? We got to be humor. Be humor. Got humor. humor. I got to pray that I'm feeling better today. Yeah. Uh, everybody says go to the doctor and get checked out. I go to the doctor and I get checked out, and I don't know if I woke up with some sort of sinus infection or or what. But my eye was swollen red right shut, and uh, and I had the worst stomach ache in my entire life. Oh wow! All day. Yeah, I suffered just about two days straight. Wow. And uh, woke up this morning, 100 bucks. It was right. Yeah. All right. Maybe it's just these pollen and allergies. Yeah, good That's been, kind of bad this year. Okay. Um, Prayer requests. Susie Q. She's starting all over again. Got to do her chemo. Oh. Just put in six hours this week to start with. It's already affecting me. Mm -hmm. uh, she's probably tired of it. This is the fourth floor. Well, the good thing that you can that you can know is that we've never stopped praying for six mm -hmm. yeah. We continue to pray every day. And, and, and that's the key. And we just know we know what the power of prayer is because you certainly can attest to that. Yes. I trust the Lord. That's right. So where was the um, inner lungs? Oh, that wasn't original. Well, last time. Last time, it was. Yep. Uh, so other prayer needs. I'd like to pray for Rodney Burns. No. Yes. He's Rodney Burns is his name. He's lost a son. Two. Two sons, yeah, yeah, his oldest and youngest. Um, and I talked to his sister, Regina, yesterday, um, and he's not doing so good. Very, very, very depressed, where he's not eating, he's very thin, just very, very angry. Yeah, he just hopeless. So I just said, you know what, we need to really up our prayers for him. He's had a rough go of life, but this is really, really, I just felt bad. You know, I know she's, she, Regina is a wonderful Christian woman, and I, you know, she's great. She's tried to be there to support him, but he's just not, he's just angry and frustrated. I get it. I understand. It's hard. I can't imagine. You know, but... Yeah. What else? Should remember Judy Ames. You know, her was passing away. We went to see uh, Judy Thursday night, Friday night. Um, she, Friday. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because he passed away Thursday night. <clears throat> she was in very good spirits and. She mentioned my dad and 
her mom, who had taught her that when it's God's time and God's plan, this is just what it is. She's, her and Simone both are very accepting of what's happened with Bruce. He had leukemia, only diagnosed last December. He went into remission, and then they were told that if it comes back, that it'll come back to the vengeance, and it did. It only took several days, <clears throat> and it was, uh, and he was gone. But, um, Is this it was, Yes. Yeah. It was, it was comforting to know that they were handling it that well. And we had a great visit over remembering Bruce and how much fun he was and what a great guy that, that he was. And she said, he's not suffering anymore. We know where he is and we'll see him again someday. takes the sting out. Yeah. Yeah, they, I mean, and she even said, she says, I don't know how people go through this that don't know the Lord. I don't know how they handle these situations. That you they don't. You can't <laughs> Not very well. They turn to other things, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Yeah, it's hard. Any other special prayer requests this week? Um, let's look at Dr. Tanya. Um, She's been struggling not only with her health but finances. She, of course, during the summer she's on the unemployment. Well, they have, and she started on unemployment claim beginning in June. And she still has not received it, but she's not the only one. It's everybody's worked for the mob program. Something's going on there where they're not releasing the unemployment to them in Massachusetts. So that means so she did finally get a hold of the, one of the head people um, the other day and they said they were going to release it but they had to do another paperwork so hopefully this week coming up but she's had begging for money so yeah she has a lot of issues going on not just her heart but she has um, that charcoal Home, doing much better. We praise the Lord for his healing. I don't know if he's out in the battle yet, but all right. Yeah, I've been. I've been, I've been, I've been keeping track of his My, my uncle, we call him Ducky. He had a heart attack, but the Lord took care of him and he's back home doing well. Okay. Just call him Uncle Ducky. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> his name was Donald, okay. and they started picking on Donald Duck, <laughs> and he ended up being this stuff. You knew him as that, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. The whole about the, the whole about the church of Emmanuel used to call him Ducky. See? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and he he took it with a good stride too. You know, he well, he'll tell you his name's Ducky. Yeah. Now he plowed. I think he still plowed that part of on over there. Oh, maybe. Yeah. The single pile, he, he worked night and day. Yeah, he's a hard worker. Yeah. Built me, built my first toy box. Did he? Yeah. And I'm probably going to be buried in it. He didn't even make me <laughs> one. Did he make you one? <laughs> right. Pearl yeah. My, my him. Grandma, grandma Pearl hired him. So oh. I, didn't, I didn't get the whole story of you were moving the toy box last time. Cost, cost her 50 bucks to build the toy box. Oh. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. little boy. Go, Jim. Is it? At this point in time, that better be a pretty big toy box. Well, I'm hoping for cremation, so I'll fit. 
Let's get a bigger one than me. <laughs> Sylvia, you had something? Yeah. Um, sadly, my daughter's up to her panics again, and whatever you want to call them. And I broke my heart, but I had to block her from Facebook because I couldn't take any more of her yelling at me. I guess I'm just going to say it that way. So. I guess we both need to do a for Becky and for me. Sister Donna, you got all these? Oh boy. <laughs> God did, honey. God's got them all. That's right. Yes. yes. I'll, I'll give it a card. Uh, that's right. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this gathering today. Thank you that we have the freedom to do so and that we can just come together in your name, Father God. And Lord, uh, we, we thank you for all the praises that were spoken. We thank you for how you work in our lives each and every day. And Father, we just lift up um, all the different prayer requests for that have been spoken. And Lord, we just lift up Sue right now. We just love her so much, Lord. And she is a woman who loves you and loves others. And Lord, we know she's been really above her circumstances. And we just pray, Lord God, that you would just touch her and heal her from her again. Just bring healing to her. I thank you for the peace that she all has. Um, can we just pray that you continue that peace, that comfort, and that healing touch? And Father, all of those who are um, missing loved ones, uh, Brenda's friend Rodney, the loss of his sons, and the loss of Judy's husband, and I know there's others, Lord. Um, that's always a tough one. And uh, we just pray, Lord, that you would comfort these hearts and that you would help the ones that are left behind with um, just an extra boost of strength and maybe just draw that much closer to you, Lord. Maybe feel your comforting arms around them, Lord, when we're going through these difficult days. And, um, Father, we, um, we ask that you would be with Sylvia and her daughter, Lord. Um, we know that sometimes uh, family issues can be a, a, a very tough one when it's your own blood. And we just pray, Lord, that um, you would be working in both um, Sylvia's heart and mind and um, just to keep on loving her daughter and just lifting her daughter before you, Lord. May there be forgiveness where forgiveness needs to be claimed and um, just bring peace this situation, Father God. Um, I know there's others, Lord. Um, maybe Jeff's daughter, who's going to be traveling back from Korea. We thank you for how you're working in her life. And um, the gentleman that LJ mentioned, Lord, um, we, we just lift any prayer requests that have been missed, Lord, before you. We thank you that you're in control. We just praise you for how you're going to work in everyone's life, Lord. And we just give this time to you. In your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> Let's pick up where we left off last week, page 196. We're talking about that, that scripture that people always like to quote for other people when they have a hard time. One that says, Can we know that all things work together? For good to those who love the Lord and are the call according to His purpose. Sometimes Christians like to say that to other Christians when that other Christians going through a hard time, and it's not always well received. Uh, but it's hard to think about that. How can God be using uh, cancer and making something good out of it? How can God use uh, taking away a wife or husband? Well, that's child. That, that one person, if they're in good, uh, good testimony to the one with carrying cancer, could be testimony to somebody, one person in the hospital, and they could be infectious that way. Right. The, that's why, like, I don't know, I watched my grandfather go through it. And uh, he, was, he was a witness right to the end. And I, I just, I try to be like that if I were ever in that circumstance. But, uh, yeah, I feel the same way. How can we, you know, 
It, it makes you wonder that way. Yeah. But God does. He has a, has ways of doing things that not only help the other people, but the sufferer, the one who's going through it. Because right. the word says all things work together, this hardship, for the good of those who love the Lord. If I love the Lord and I'm going through a hardship, God's going to turn it into something good. That's his promise. God cannot lie. But he promised he would do. But that's what we're studying. <clears throat> so let's look a little further. Building Christ-like character. Sledgehammer to a jackhammer. An example. But what would cause that? What, why does God use that? Because it's stubborn. I just I don't want to listen. I want to do it my way. Yeah. That's it. We want to do things our way. And, and we, I don't want it now. And you said we don't want to listen. Listen. <clears throat> the Bible says God speaks to us in a Still, small voice. Quiet. A whisper. But if you don't listen, he has to speak loud. And that's a lot of times where our troubles come from. If you're not listening. I talked to the guys in jail. They didn't listen. Now they're in jail where they can listen. So God is really showing his love when he allowed that to happen to them. He could have said, no, I'm going to keep them out of jail. Let them go their, own, their same way. But that's not love. You know, if you're, you've got a little child who wants to play in the middle of the road, and, and you say, no, don't go in the middle of the road, and the child says, I'm going anyway. And you say, well, I love you so much, okay, I'm going to let you. And here comes the tractor trailer. But you go ahead and do what you want, because I love you. We don't do that. I remember my mom running out and grabbing one of the kids and paddling them because they were out in the middle of the road in front of my house. Mm -hmm. And that is love. So God sometimes will use a harsh thing to get our attention. You know, if he has to. I remember struggling with an issue and, and I told my brother-in-law about it. And he said, well, God's not going to hit you in the head with brick. 
And I said, well, I kind of wish you would. <laughs> because I'm stubborn too, Sylvia. And it takes a lot to get through to me sometimes. And, but, but if we're really wanting God to work in our lives, we're willing to get hit in the head and quit. I don't want to miss heaven. It'd be better that I would not be born than miss heaven. So if that's what it takes, I want God to do that. Some people, that they pray that for their kids. I do too. You know, that's a hard prayer. But I, I would rather have something terrible happen to my kids if it meant turning them to the Lord to make sure they're ready for heaven than to let them have a blessed life and go to hell. Mm -hmm. So God is loving us when he lets things happen to us. Now, I don't think it means he always wants those bad things to happen, but he will let them happen. He doesn't want me to abuse somebody, but he might let that happen in order to do something good. Any other thoughts about that? It's a hard thing to think about. I know when my son fell that, that year, he was, it was winter time, he was working for Time Warner Cable, and I talked with him that morning, and I've always told people, I said, every time you talk to your kid, you need to tell them that you love them before you hang up, and how, just how important it is. And I talked with him that morning, and later on, I was in Syracuse, uh, having some work done on a car that I had bought, and I received a phone call that he had fallen. Uh, the ladder he put up on a pole, and slid and he fell and he wasn't wearing his hard hat and he hit his head. Well, he was in the House of Good Samaritan in Watertown and they were trying to stabilize him enough so they could bring him to Syracuse. I, so I remember standing between the door, there was two doors at the dealership and I remember standing between the doorways and just praying to God. I said, God, please, please don't take him. He's not saved. Please don't take it. I don't care if he can't walk or talk or whatever, whatever condition he's in, please don't take him. And God granted my wish. He went in, they got him into Syracuse, uh, into the neurological unit. Three days later, he came home. Uh, God had just totally worked a miracle. I mean, to, and to this day, you would know, we wouldn't know that anything had ever happened to him. But I prayed that that was the time that he would really reach out to the Lord, that it would, he would get saved over that. And to my knowledge, I don't think he has. But I continue to pray for him. So, and I know that if I pass from this earth, my prayers are still going up. He's still here. My prayers are still going up, you know, for that. But that certainly was a case of God using the jackhammer with him to try to get him to, to turn to him. He was married to a gal who went with Jehovah's Witness. And she was a strong Jehovah's Witness for many years. And when they divorced, she told me one time, she said, I gave up my, my family and my marriage for my faith and I do it again. That's how bad that she had she had been affected by this. Um, she no longer is a Jehovah's Witness and I don't know if she's turned to the Lord or not, but it, just those kinds of things you, you have to persevere. You just have to But we have to have our our priority right. What is the most important thing in the whole world? It can save it. Yeah. And then, taking as many people with us as we can. Better to not be born. You're going to not leave, take you're going to leave this world and you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. That's all there right. is to it. That's only, right. only two choices. So if we keep that mindset, that's going to affect our whole lives. Everything we do, 
all the choices you made. If you keep having in view, that's going to guide my whole life. But when we begin to forget about what's ahead, that's when the devil has a chance to work. Trip us up. People think, oh, I'm going to, I don't have to deal with that. I'm going to be around for a long time. I'm young. Well, you're not going to be young forever. And you don't know. Your time might be up today. Betrayal. Yeah. Betrayal by who? Judas. 
Peter and one of his most disciples. Yeah, one of his most disciples. You know, you ever have a friend turn away from you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I walk in a pretty tight circle now. I have no friends. <laughs> I think I have one, and he actually, uh, Stevie turned uh, 61, you know what he said today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, did he? Yeah. 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 Happy birthday, Steve. Wish you were here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I tried to get him to come here, but he, uh, yeah, he I just woke him up at 9 30. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think it was 8 30. Well, we have Bible study at 4. Yeah. You can make that one. You can't make the morning one. Right. But yeah, Jesus went through all that, so much more. So when we're going through troubles, that's a good thing to do. Hey, he went through it, and he'll help me through it. remember that. He said, uh, if the world hates me, it will hate you. But cheer up, for I've overcome the world. So we're overcomers too, if we're walking with Jesus. There's nothing that can happen to me that he won't take me through. Right. Nothing. He tells us, blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake. Tells us to jump for joy when that happens. So if somebody abuses you because you're a Christian, and they will, we should be jumping for joy. We should almost say thank you. You just <coughs> need a blessing. Mm -hmm. You don't know about it, but I do. Yeah. <laughs> okay, LJ. Uh, responding to the problems as used would. Problems don't automatically produce what God intends. Many people become bitter rather than better and never grow up. You have to respond the way Jesus would. Remember that God plans is good. God knows what is best for you and has your best interest at heart. God told Jeremiah, the plans I have for you are plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. Jesus understood this truth when he was when he told his brothers who had sold him into slavery. You intended to harm me, but God intended for your good. Uh, has, I just feel that. As a parent, echo the same sentiment about his life threatening illness. It was for my own good that I had such a hard time. Whenever God says no to your request for relief, remember God is, is doing what is best for us, training us to live God's holy best. What do you think about those words? See any truth in there? Yeah. If God says no, if I'm praying for something and, and God doesn't give it to me, I prayed this summer I get to go to Colorado for a hunting. And you just stayed in St. Rose, got a deal. <laughs> I said I'm going to jail every day. <laughs> but when he says no, is he just going to be me? No, he's protecting me. Yeah. Yeah, there's, there's a reason why, you know. Right. You never he's, know. If he says no, there should be something good coming out of the yeah. Something better. Yeah. Yeah. Something better for you. Yeah. yeah. That's when it can be time. It's hard to be patient because you never know sometimes how close you are to God's success if you give up. If you just just far away. Yeah. I wonder how many times you missed it by one prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people know that verse. Jeremiah, 
where he says, I know the plans I have for you. Yeah. Plans to bless you, prosper you, give you a future, not to harm you. But they forget about the verse that's just two verses down. That's 2911. 2913, just two verses away, says, you will seek me and you will find me when you search for me. That's the other part. God has a plan for us, but we may never see that plan if we're not seeking Him with all our heart. And I don't know if that's something that comes natural to seek God with all our heart. We have to ask Him, Lord, help me to seek You with all my heart. It's like we give God permission because He doesn't force Himself on us. He's not going to turn me into a robot. But if I pray, Lord, help me to seek you with all my heart. Now he has the opportunity to give me what I just prayed for. And it's certainly in line with his will. Because he says it. So, that's, that's something we need to remember. It's, it's not all about God giving it to us. It's us seeking him. Any other thoughts about that? There's getting off quiet. Sometimes it's not, like you pray that prayer and you think, well, the plans and the prosper is just ahead of you. Well, it is ahead of you, but it might take a while to get there. So you need to have patience and just uh, keep praying that prayer. Trust and faith. And uh, he'll get you through it. What's that, Trust and faith. Yes. Trust and faith. Go together. Yeah. And I think you gotta have patience in there too, you know. Yes. A lot of patience because as humans we expect, you know, everything in a flash. Yeah. It's gonna go through, you know, right then. And where I this is where I lack. I, I want to like I want to direct response.